Hasn't it been a bit slow for the Mini Racers line this year? I mean, we've already had multiple waves of the Mini Boxes, and yet there's only been one new release per wave, which is absolutely ridiculous because, you know, two or three years ago, we used to get five to seven new releases per wave, and now we're only getting one at best. And back then, that was on top of all the three packs, 10 packs, and even larger packs they used to put out. This year, we've only gotten three packs and those three new singles. So that's exactly what we're going to be unboxing today, but I still think it's going to be absolutely amazing because I think although they aren't releasing as many minis as they've done in the past, I think these are overall better. The caliber, the quality of these characters, I mean, I think they're much, much better than the ones we've gotten in the past. I'm super excited to dive in here. We've got some awesome Cars 1 and Cars 2 characters, which is why I think that these are better, you know, in the past. And I'm not really faulting Mattel for this, but it was a lot of Piston Cup racers, a lot of Demolition Derby racers, a lot of silver and metallics and whatnot. I want new and unique characters, and that is exactly what Mattel has given us here with these 2022 releases so we're going to dive right in here it's not going to be you know much of a giga unboxing i would say but i would still put it up there toward the mega category now i don't know who is actually in each of these i just know that i you know the three of these equate to the new ones but i don't know who's in what box but this is purple 25 there and you know these numbers do indicate what's inside you just need to know them in advance Unfortunately, though, not many stores actually carry the mini boxes anymore. I know back in the day, like Walgreens, well, they had the bags. Meyer had them at a time. But now it's very, very limited. I know Kroger has had them. But that's a regional store. They're not across the country. Neither is HEB, which also carries them. But either way, here is our first look. This is Jonas Carver's, the next-gen no star racer now i'm just going to unbox these for the time being and then when we'll get down on the table i will compare them all to their 155 scale releases so it's kind of a review and unboxing because i think it's important to show how these differ from the full scale versions now this one's a little bit beat up i think this is going to be hot rod junior moon here could be wrong though but this was the year that they switched to these horizontal boxes instead of the you know more vertical ones they did in the past and so now they could reuse the colors oh we got a little bit of bubble wrap in here i wonder if this was open before i bought it i'm not entirely sure but either way it is indeed hot rod junior moon awesome stuff so that means this should be dragon light mcqueen so that one hot rod junior came out first then you had Dragon McQueen, and then now Jonas Carvers is the newest from the newest wave this year. And yeah, sure enough, here is Dragon Light McQueen looking amazing as per usual. He'll look great next to Tokyo Mater, who they did last year in a three-pack. Now, speaking of three-packs, this is very interesting how they did the ones this year so far because, well, first off, they did a wave with three like new packs, one of which was DJ here. I think the other one was like Rusty Rusties and maybe the other one, yeah, it was like Rusty Rusties, the DJ pack and the Raul Cerule pack. So those were in two packs case R or three packs case R. Then, you know, very shortly after releasing that, they released S here, which is what has been being found at Target stores across the country and also in Australia and hopefully some other places as well. This pack or this case includes all of the new packs from case R, so the immediately previous case, except for the DJ pack here. So it's just kind of redundant, it's kind of weird, but I was able to get the case here from Get Me Collectibles, my usual supplier, and then buy this off eBay, which was not easy to do. The reason why this video has taken so long to make is honestly because of this pack right here. I was only seeing, you know, these for sale from Australia because that's, you know, where the case has only been found so far, but they have been sneaking around some HEB stores in the United States. And so that is how I was able to get this pack off eBay. I assume the seller found it at HEB or maybe like a Fry's store because I know that those are also a more regional grocery store that sells Disney Cars products. So yeah, we're going to start here with DJ. 
I like the stock image for him and they put the box around it to indicate that he's new. Lightning McQueen, even though it's the Cars 3 McQueen technically. And you have Mac, which I needed a new Mac because the current one I have is chipped. So this is what I mean when like I say unique Cars 1 characters. Oh man, I hate when it does that. Ugh. Sorry, we'll just take out DJ for now. I mean, DJ is the epitome of a unique character, unique model for sure, and just a classic, iconic character, beloved by fans. And he is the first delinquent road hazard tuner to be released in mini form, and so hopefully this opens the door for Boost, DJ, Snot Rod. I mean, Boost, Wingo, and Snot Rod. <laughs> That's DJ right there, Disney Docket. All right, so Case S here should have a lot of goodies. It should have like five new packs. Yeah, I really don't get it. Like why they make one pack or one case with three new packs and then they turn around like the next couple weeks, literally, because they were released so close to each other and they make three additional new packs, but they also put the other two packs, two of the three from before in the case, just leaving DJ as the odd man out. Hopefully that's making sense, but you guys should know what I mean. So first up here is the gray semi pack. So this is kind of like a Dynaco set. You have Dynaco McQueen, you have the King, and then of course, gray semi. They're just referring to him as gray. Do they name these packs anymore? I don't think they do, even though they have names like behind the scenes, like when Gimme Collectibles received these, initially like they did not show what characters were inside, but rather like the theme for the pack. And they did used to name these. So this one obviously would be a Dynaco themed set. Again, they open terribly. Jeez, it's like I'm a raccoon clawing into this. Shouldn't be this hard. Oh my goodness, all right. Here is our guy, Gray Semi. Of course, the Dynaco Transporter. Wow, this is a nice looking mini, but I don't wanna to show too much because we're going to review it on the table in a little bit here. Now, I love this pack, ironically. <laughs> so they did Dusty Rusties in a three pack a while ago and it just absolutely I don't know Mattel is just teasing us when they release Dusty in a three pack with like McQueen and somebody else and then you just know that they're going to release Rusty at some other point in a three pack and then you have to rebuy them all so the people that waited and got these at the same time very wise of you I should have done that but I'm impatient because it's like yeah you know if they release Dusty they're going to eventually do Rusty as well and it is kind of sacrilegious to separate them. Like they've always been released together. Like even when they're released as singles, they're both released during that same year, which I think was only 2013 that they were released separately. But yeah, there you have it. You have Rusty Rusties. I don't like how this box kind of darkens their stock image though. I'm not a big fan of that. Another Cars 3 Light McQueen. Even though it should be the Cars 1 technically, although I guess they can get a pass because Rusty and Dusty do appear at the Rusty's Racing Center when McQueen has this paint job briefly in Cars 3. And so here he is. Nice. Oh, here we go. This is where the money's at. Now we're getting in the business. We have Holly Shiftwell. This guy was like a 10 pack exclusive exclusive the target and now he's in a three pack and he's not even the main course holly shiftwell is and you get a world grand prix lightning mcqueen the racing wheels version but yeah it does kind of stink that you know those who bought the big 10 pack for 44.99 with hot rod mater as the only new one now just get absolutely mocked by this three pack and i was included in those people you guys know that but it's all right i mean we should come to expect it by now but 
There are some other ones that have yet to get re-released. Like, you know, you have Steve Slick LePage and Road Trip Ramon. And you have some other ones as well that are staying pretty exclusive to their packs. So here you have Holly Shiftwell and she's in a nice metallic color. So I can't wait to compare her to the 155 scale version. And we know there are a lot of 155 scale versions of Holly. Now this is probably my least favorite of the bunch because, you know, like I said earlier, it's a Cars 3 racer. And, you know, whether that be next gen, stock car, demolition derby or retro, it just gets a little stale after a while because there has been so many. But Superfly is a pretty unique model, so I shouldn't really complain much. But yeah, there he is there, looking pretty good. Rusty's Racing Center McQueen this time. And you have Blind Spot. Blind Spot was a rare mini at one point, but after several re-releases, she's kind of lost her specialness. I feel like, yeah, every pack except one has had a Lightning McQueen in it. It's like... <laughs> Lightning McQueen's everyone's chaperone. You can't go outside the house without Lightning McQueen. <laughs> so here you have Superfly looking really nice as well. Yeah, honestly, this might even be better than the 155 scale version. I just love how wild the spoiler and the exhaust pipes coming out of the engine look there. I think that's really unique. All right, up next we have Finn McMissile. I can't believe all of these were new. I'm literally opening up every pack in this case. I didn't know that there were four new ones in this. But yeah, Finn McMissile, I think he's also getting a single release, but I'm not confident on that. I know he was supposed to, or at least we thought he was earlier in the year because he was originally revealed alongside Dragon Lightning McQueen. Now, Sidley in this pack was released as a single. I think so, yeah. So that's how I got him initially, so we don't have to really complain about, you know, that one as much as Funny Car Mater. But yeah, here's Finn McMissile, and again, we will compare him to the Palace Danger version momentarily. But it's awesome to have some of the main characters now from Cars 2. Speaking of main characters from Cars 2, here we have Raul Sarul. By the way, I don't know, did I show the back packaging for that? I want to make sure I show the back for all these. At least so you guys can pause and check it out if you want to. But yeah, this is a pretty cool set. You guys know I do like World Grand Prix racers, even though you know I was joking when I said Raul is a main character. Carla's another one that was in a three-pack before. And now she is in somebody else's three-pack. Oh, there's the back. <laughs> Raul Sarul, Lane McQueen with racing wheels. I already got one of him and Carla Veloso. Yay! I'm literally running out of room in my mini racers case, so I'm going to have to magically make some more room for all these guys. But yeah, here's Raul, and now I will be right back on the table. So we got the entire squad here staring at us, ready to be reviewed, and you guys know how it goes. We start with our least favorite, and we move toward the best. And I guess in this case, we only have my opinion filed so far. So let me know in the comment section below. Out of all these, who is your favorite? Who's your least favorite? How do you rank them? And I guess, you know, it might be a little difficult to make your decision until after you see all these reviewed. So yeah, guys, just think about it as I'm going through. I don't think it's any surprise to anyone that my least favorite is Hot Rod Jr. Besides Dragon Lightning McQueen, he's the only variant. Everyone else is a new character. And Dragon McQueen... Yeah, I think he's a better variant by a mile than Hot Rod Jr. here. But yeah, if you guys don't know, all mini racers are made in Thailand. So I'm going to show as many Thailand 155 scale versions as possible. Now that's pretty easy for this one because Hot Rod Jr. was only released in Thailand in 2019 and 2021. So he looks pretty good. You know, you just got the gray flames there. The expression is pretty standard it is different from the regular version of junior moon which they took a while to release this regular version of junior moon but it's kind of like the heyday version so yeah you can see a couple differences in like the coloring and whatnot he now has like the white wall tires and everything or well i should say back in the day he did the license plates are going to be too small to read here but it says moonshine on the 155 scale version 
He looks way glossier <laughs> as a mini racer. And it feels more metal. Like it feels like more legit metal than the 155 scale version does. It kind of feels like cheap metal. And the fenders here aren't even die cast. Now he was produced in the 42nd week of 2021. There you go. So long ago I got this guy. Like literally he was the first one for this pile. Like I just kind of like assemble a pile of mini racers. And I'm like, yeah. When the pile gets big enough, we'll make a unboxing out of it. And Hot Rod Jr. was the first in the pile, so he's been waiting here for probably like seven months. All right, moving on to Dragon Lightning McQueen. Now, this is not my like second least favorite. I think Jonas might be that, but we're going to you know go to the other variants here, just to be fair. Now, this is a non-oil stain version. Both of these do not have oil stains, but of course there is a 155 scale version that does. There's a metallic version, another eye variation, lots of factory customs. So it's important to you know keep everything straight in your mind. But yeah, this guy's going to look great next to our Tokyo Mater Mini, which I'll pull out here in a second. I love how they did the rims here. They look really nice and elegant, just kind of like a simple gold. And the graphics are very well done. I love how they put roof flaps on him. <laughs> I don't think they should be there, but it's interesting that the 155 scale version doesn't have them. I think it's because, you know, he's not actually supposed to have them. But yeah, this was actually pretty simple for Mattel to do because it's just a repaint of the World Grand Prix version of McQueen. However, it technically is not in like the actual cars universe like this dragon lightning mcqueen here is a different model than world grand prix lightning mcqueen and the 155 scale versions do reflect that but you know when everything's so small it's not really that big of a deal to like create an entirely new mold for such a subtle difference in the body but for the bigger ones it does make a difference and here is tokyo mater wow they do look really good together it's kind of like a good and bad thing that I have to create some more space for these because now these guys can look good together. Before, Tokyo Mater was just with like some random cars. I think I had him with like some other Maters or something. So now it's definitely going to look a little bit better in my collection. Same thing with Rusty. You know, now I can put him with Dusty. Before, he was just with some stragglers. <laughs> he was homeless. All right, so here we have Jonas Carvers, the next-gen no-stall racer. Not a whole lot to say here. Copy and paste. Reduce size by 70% and copy and paste. That's how they do it. The decals look okay. Those are a little, eh. The 123 is a little darker. But you still have the arrow. You still have the exhaust pipes. You still have the gas cap. The trim on the rims is still there. That's pretty gosh darn good detailing. No window bars in the back, but that's okay. Everything else is transferred over and looks really good. Jonas is one of my favorite next gens because of the fact that he is red and red's my favorite color. He was also one of the last ones to be released in 2020. RO8 means he was made during the eighth week of this year. And he was just recently like distributed, although I don't know if any stores have gotten this one in or it's just like resellers because again, not many retailers even have the mini boxes so we don't get many reports of people finding them. And so that's why you know everything might not be super up to date. So yeah, there you have Jonas. I feel like I was supposed to show something else with that but I completely blanked. Oh, I wanted to show this guy's base code. That's what I wanted to do. R01, I'll let you guys guess. <laughs> Shouldn't be much of a guess. First week of 2022. All right, next up is the French rally racer of the World Grand Prix, Raoul Sarul. He looks a little bulky as a mini. Like, he looks like he's got chubby cheeks. This is what they do sometimes. Like, they kind of misproportionately reduce the size. It's like, you know, when you're like a Word document or you're trying to resize an image and you like don't do it proportionally so it stretches or distorts the image. That's kind of what I see when I look at some of these minis. Now I don't, I think Jonas is maybe a little too thin. I do think Junior is 
mm, maybe he's a little too wide. Like I can kind of see it in a lot of these. Some of them we'll get to, I think are perfect. I think Superfly is a perfect scale, but some of these, yeah, not so much. But they're cute though. I feel like that's the thing they're going for. Like a lot of people say, oh, it's so cute. It's so mini, right? And that's kind of what happens, you know, when you distort them and you get like a chubby cheeked Raul Cerule, you know. But yeah, there you go. He's got some gray rims. They look a little grayer than the silver ones. Decals are all there. All in all World Grand Prix. Very difficult to see that World Grand Prix text right there, but it is there. The expression's almost identical in the mouth and the eyes. They did a nice job though. Like I like how they did the spoiler because it's a difficult one to do with all those spokes and all those pillars. Now the graphics aren't super good, but coming from Thailand and you know, it's a mini racer, you gotta cut some slack. This guy is R12, so 12th week of this year. Makes sense, because he was just recently released, and so the 12th week was like the third month. So yeah, you know, a nice three to four month turnaround on these guys, not too, too bad. All right, Superfly. So I know I said going into this, he would be one of my least favorites, but I love the way he sized. Like, it looks so perfect to me. Like, everything's been reduced equally and proportionally, and he doesn't look distorted at all. I also like his expression because I can see his mouth better on the Mini than I can on the 155 scale version. Now, of course, you have the big pipes coming out of the engine, which are kind of his gimmick. Every Demolition Derby racer kind of has a gimmick, and his are the pipes and the wooden spoiler. He looks a little dirtier, like the paint on his front tires are wearing off a little bit more, and the black on the doors there a little bit more prevalent the original superfly 72 on the spoiler now the spoiler is like almost taller on the mini than it is on the 155 scale version that's kind of odd and it's a little bendy get wrecked it's like back in the old minecraft days when somebody would say get r-e-k-t in the chat you must be so cool you know right <laughs> You must be just the king on your block when you say get wrecked. Anyways, you got the 72 on the roof there. Superfly again, looking pretty good. He does have the bigger tires in the back, but they are not treaded like they are on the 155 scale version. But again, you know, some of those details have to be forsaken when you reduce the size so much. So I'm still pretty happy with it. Can't complain. All right, let's go on over to Rusty Rusties, because now the four remaining are like ooh, Giga Chad territory, if you know what I mean. So this one's been resized pretty well, too. I do think he should be longer and not as squunchy. The expressions sure are almost the same. He's got the vinyl top. It's been tearing a little bit more on the mini. I like the matte finish they give him. It has a nice texture to it. Like you could feel like a gravelly texture when you run your finger across him, especially in the back here. So that's pretty cool. They do have a matte finish on the rusty here, the 155 scale, but it's not, you know, you don't feel like a gritty texture. It's just the paint color and the paint finish. So in other words, I like this Mini a lot, maybe even more so than the regular, even though they're pretty much incomparable. You can't compare big and small like that, right? Can't compare size. Anyways, you have Rust there for the bumper. Makes sense, right? His name's Rusty. He's the owner of Rusty's. Oh, I even like the little scratches that they give around the Mini on the trunk there and everything that's really realistic and something that the 155 scale version doesn't have. The rims also look pretty good. Nice. Paired up with Dusty. They look awesome together. This guy, Dusty, is definitely brighter than Rusty, which is a little off-putting, I have to say. I don't think they should be that different in color tone. 
But yeah, they look good. Happy to have them, and well, now I have two Dusties. <laughs> Let's see, are they a variant? Uh, doesn't look like it. Nope. All right, so let's move on to Finn McMissile. So I decided to use the Palace Danger version of Finn for the comparison because I thought it was most similar to the Mini. The regular version is a very boring expression. And plus, they haven't released that regular version in years. The last two times they released Finn, it's been this version. And it's from Thailand too, so win-win. But yeah, I was really excited for this mini going into the year because I think that, you know, they have such a wealth of characters across all the movies, all the Cars tunes, and yet you're neglecting Cars too. They have some of the most unique models, you know, with Finn, Holly, you move on to Grem, Acer, Professor Z. There's so much potential. Like Miles Axrod, if we see a mini of him, I'd not be surprised at all. And yet... They kept on just repeating the same, you know, next gen model after next gen model after stock car after stock car. Got a little repetitive. So when I start seeing, you know, freaking Rotor Turboski, Carl Veloso, Sidley the Jet, and now Finn and Holly here, it's like, wow, they really, they're changing things and I love it. I'm very happy about what they're doing. So have to applaud Mattel for that. I just don't like how they release them. Like they always just put one new car in a three pack. So you have to buy the entire shebang. And they used to put more in the singles. But then again, the singles aren't really available anywhere. At least the three packs are pretty easy to find at Target across the US. So the rims look pretty good, pretty accurate. It's got a nice metallic blue almost, a nice finish to his paint. 314 FMCM, so that stands for Michael Caine's birthday, who voiced Finn March 14th, Pi Day. And then FMCM is Finn Mick Missile. And you have his little logo there on the trunk, which is look how much smaller it is. Wow. Very nice. Definitely one of my new favorite minis. Probably ranks in the top 15 for me. And that's saying a lot because there are a ton of minis. R08. All right, let's move on to Holly Shiftwell now. So this version that I'm using for Holly is from the Amazon Cars 2 Starter Pack, which I showed in one of my Giga Hauls, because I thought that the color is the most accurate to the movie, but it's also the closest to the Mini. I mean, here is like your Chinese version of Holly, which is eh, not great. And then the other Thailand version of Holly is just that bright pink color, and we know that that's not even on the same planet. So I thought not even worth showing that one. Now I've seen some pictures of this mini and I always thought like, wow, she looks metallic and she really does here in person. She looks gorgeous. I do like her better than Finn because I love the color and you can really see the sparkle in her paint. The expression's pretty boring. They really do copy and paste for most of these. Finn was the exception there. He kind of has a hybrid expression of you know, Palace Danger and regular Finn, but, you know, looking at Rusty here, Holly, Superfly, Raul especially, all these are very, very similar. And they were able to do her license plate nicely and the H logo, the H logo there, 10L, HSI, or is that a 12? I think that's HSI 201. Who voiced... Holly Schiffel, was it Emma something? Oh, I can't remember. She's definitely not as prominent of an actress though as like Michael Caine, so hopefully I didn't insult her or anything. But the rims aren't the best here. I do really like the silver ones on here. But what I do love seeing is a unibody Holly because from the dawn of time, they've always done this really stupid plastic back bumper, which just looks gross. The colors don't match. You got that crack there. So, superior. Next up is DJ. He also kind of has a little bit of a different expression, but not by a whole lot. Now, I would not be surprised if the next wave of mini three-packs features 
probably two more tuners, but they won't be in the same pack. You're stupid if you think they'll be in the same pack. That's a little mean, but I mean, seriously though, if you think they're going to do a three pack of Wingo, Boost, and Snot Rod, uh, where, what? where have you been? If you think they're going to do a three pack of Boost, Snot Rod, and I don't know, somebody else, yeah, you might be within the realm of possibility, but my prediction, we're going to get like a Snot Rod DJ McQueen pack, and you're going to get like a Boost Mac and McQueen pack, or a Boost DJ McQueen, a Boost Mac McQueen, and then you could like substitute Wingo in there as well. I do think they'll re-include DJ because, I mean, that's what they did with like Carl Veloso and some of the other ones here. They're exclusive in three-pack for a while and then they reappear in another three-pack. But yeah, I mean, releasing DJ opens the door for a lot more. Like, I see Finn and Holly. I don't automatically think that they're going to do like Graham Acer, Miles Axelrod, Professor Z next. But DJ, though... I mean, that immediately implies that they're doing the rest of the tuners and probably they'll have the rest of them out by the end of the year. I honestly would be surprised if we don't see at least one or two more tuners by the end of the year. Maybe they push the third one out until 2023, but I doubt it. I really do. But yeah, regardless, this is a great mini. They did a phenomenal job with DJ. It's probably in my top 10 all time. The spoiler is plastic, but that's okay. The detailing is just spot on. I mean, they got every speaker down to the grain. The exhaust pipes just look so piddly, but <laughs> yeah, really, really nicely done. And last but not least is gray semi. So this is the gray semi that was released as a deluxe because you can see it has no hole there, so you can't connect to a trailer. And yeah, those expressions are pretty similar as well. Now, I'm not sure. I don't think gray is my favorite in this case or in this unboxing. But he's up there. I mean, it's pretty wild that they're doing these types of characters like Mac and Gail Bofford as well. I just feel like, I don't know, some of their choices, like I like them. Like when you do Rotor Turboski or Sidley, I absolutely adore those choices. Like they're great characters. But a little out of the box thinking. It's like, you know, if I'm Mattel, you know, I'm, you know, for me, I'm a very conservative type of guy. Like, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't mean that like politically in any way, shape, or form, but just like in terms of my decision, like what I would do is just follow a very strict order. I do, you know, I'd probably toss in like a new piston cut racer every other case or something. I would do all the tuners. I would do all the World Grand Prix racers. I just follow a very, you know, strict line, you know, just go down like the character list. I wouldn't bounce around to all these exotic characters like Roger as well. But it works though. Like they should be doing what they're doing because they keep us on their t our toes and they, you know, they got to throw in some exotic stuff here. So I like this choice. I've been talking a lot this video, but I just have so much to say. Some people in the comments say like, Shut up, you're loud. You know what? Screw you. I'm going to talk as much as I want. If you don't like it, don't watch. Now, I always think that like my cabs here are yellowing, like this white background here, which is on every car's one cab except for Dan Holland. They have the white background on the cap behind the logo. I always think it's yellowing, but it's not. I mean, this is a brand new mini racer and they purposefully kind of tainted the color. It's not a pure white. And it's not supposed to be. It's just how it is in the movie. But yeah, there you have it. Dynaco logos on the side. Wow, those are so small. He does have a hole, so I guess you could make a custom Dynaco trailer. Or maybe they're hinting at doing some in the future, although I doubt it. Axel Ben, that license plate's pretty clear. I could read it. R6833. Dynaco on the mud flaps. Awesome stuff, guys. Now, I did want to compare him briefly to Mac because they're pretty similar. But yeah, obviously, they have to be different models. And it does look like they have the same rims, though. Oh, man. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? So you know how I said that I needed a new Mac because my first one was chipped? And you could see that it has a chip. And now the license plate's been torn off that sucks man 
half of it's just gone, <laughs> reduced to ashes. If only I could like unscrew this and like, uh, you know what? I might be able to do that actually. I might, oh, it's a rivet. Mm, I think, yeah, that's like a rivet. I don't think I could do that because I would love to like take the body and put it with the base of this one. And then I'd have a pristine perfect Mac because right now I have two imperfect Macs. Oh well. Now before we end off this very long video, I do wanna show you guys something pretty cool and that is that they've done micro drifters for a lot of the characters that they're releasing right now. I mean look, you have Funny Car Mather, which I don't think is a coincidence at all. I mean, taking a look at the mini racers, why do you choose such an obscure Mather to release? Well, we already kind of did one that was small like that. We already did a micro drifter version. So why not, you know, do him in the mini racers line? It, it's too similar to be a coincidence to me. He also was in a three pack with Finn and Holly. And so now he's in a three pack with Holly, I think it was. And it's a little bit too coincidental for my liking. You also have obviously, you know, the Finn and Holly minis. You have DJ there. They did do micro drifters of the other tuners, including Kabuto and Yakuza. So I would not be surprised if they do Kabuto and Yakuza in the mini racers line, because you know what also they're doing? Tokyo Mather stuff. So yeah, guys, let me know in the comment section below what was your favorite mini from today. I also have this pretty cool metallic Raul Rule micro drifter. But yeah, you guys probably can tell what my favorite is. I do think it's going to be DJ, DJ number one, Holly number two, uh, Gray Semi, where did you go? You're probably number four, yeah, just because you're not very unique, you know, I mean, he is a unique model, but you know what I'm saying. These are probably my favorite four, and then Raul will probably slide in the number five there with Rusty and Dragon McQueen battling for the next spot. But yeah, guys, let me know how you rank them down below. I will see you soon for another video. Bye now.